Today on The Joy of Editing, you'll learn how to create a custom TK8 workspace in Photoshop. I'm your host, Dave Kelly, and it's TK Friday. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. It's TK Friday, my favorite day of the week. Today, I want to teach you how to make your own customized TK8 workspace in Photoshop. Also, I'll show you how to save out that workspace and how to back it up just in case something would happen to Photoshop, you'd be able to get it back. By the way, if you don't yet own the TK8 plugin for Photoshop, you can click on my affiliate link found in the description below this video. Just click on that link. It'll take you to the TK web store where you can purchase the TK8 plugin for Photoshop along with training videos. And if you use my promo code DK15, you'll save 15% off your entire purchase. And when you do that, you're supporting the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And for that, I truly thank you. Well, let's jump right into it. By the way, to find your TK8 panels, just come up to the Photoshop menu and click on Plugins, and you'll find them right inside there. And then simply just click on each one of those plugins and open them up. Once you've opened up your panels, you're going to see them sitting out on your desktop like this. Now we need to figure out where we want to place them. And it may be different for each and every one of us. You may like your panels in a different location than I will, but I'm going to show you how I set mine up. But you'll understand how you can dock these panels if you watch closely here. It's really not that hard to do. If you don't like to keep your panels open all the time, what you can do is just click on a panel, like this My Actions panel, click, and I'm going to drag it into this area right here. Now watch when I drag this over. See how you see a blue line coming up there? That, if I let go right here, it would dock it right there. Now I can just click on here and drag it out. It's just that simple. You're not going to hurt anything. But if I want to put it in here, what I would do is I would click and drag, not to that line right there, but drag a little further and you see that little blue bar right there. I'm holding my left click down on my mouse, so I'm going to release it, and now you'll see it in here. So. You can see this is the TK8 My Actions panel. So if I click on it, I'll open it up and then I can close it. Now, if you want to dock all of these right over here, just click, drag them over. And as soon as you see that blue line, release it. Come grab the other one, find the blue line and release it. We'll grab this other one, you know, grab the blue line and release it. Or if I go to the left of that and you see that long blue bar coming down or blue line, release, and now it's in there. And again, you can just click and drag it out of here. And now if you want to put it here and dock it, we'll just click and see that little blue line. Just click right there. And now they're in here. But I don't like to keep mine here. I like to keep mine open at all times. And I'll show you what I'll do. I'm going to drag these all back out of here. Now you could click right here. Now you have to left click and hold that left click as you're dragging. And see, I can pull that out. I can grab this one, left click, drag. I'm holding as I'm going across. Left click and drag. And left click and drag. So now they're out of here. By the way, if you left click, you'll open up that panel. If you left click it again, you'll close it. And also, if you click the X on any one of these, you'll close that panel. It'll no longer be on your desktop. And then you would have to come back up to plugins and open it back up again. By the way, where you'll find your workspaces, if you'll come up to the right upper corner of the interface and you see this icon right here, if you click this drop down, these are your workspaces. These are the workspaces that come with Photoshop here. Right now, I'm using the photography workspace. And it's a good starting point, but this is where I'll start my customization. So this histogram right here, I don't want it here so I'm going to click and drag. I can drag it out here, but what I want to do is come over. And when I drag to this area right here and you drag slowly and you see that blue bar or line, and then I don't want it there. I'm going to keep dragging. I don't want it in here. You can see the little blue line right there. But if I drag a little bit further to the left, I get another long blue line. So now I'm going to, I'm still holding the left click of my mouse. I'm going to release it. And now the histograms right there. So that's my first step. I want my histogram here. And again, this may not be the way you want to set yours up, but by watching me customize my workspace, you'll understand how you can dock things and you'll know what to do. Now, here comes a very important tip. If you're having an issue where you're saying, you know what, Dave, 
I'm doing what you're telling me. I'm clicking like like the navigator. I'm clicking and I'm dragging. I'm left clicking. I'm holding. Nothing's happening. I click on my histogram. I left click, hold, drag. Nothing happens. Here's what you need to do. Come up here to window and then you'll see workspace right here. And then what you want to do is you want to come down, see where it says lock workspace. If that's checked on, your workspace is locked and you can't change anything. So click this and uncheck it. And now you can see if I take this navigator and drag it out here, it will drag out and move. And as you can see, as I move over, hover over here, you see the blue lines, they start to come up here, here, here. And then you see a square in here so I can dock it right in here. So the secret is whenever you see those blue lines, that is a place that you can dock. I hope that makes sense. Now you see adjustments here. I'm going to click and drag this out of here. I don't use this because you could get your adjustments here, but we get all our adjustments. Most of the ones we're going to use right from the TK plugin for Photoshop on either the combo or CX panel or the multi mask panel itself. So what we can do is if I click X, I'll just get rid of this. I don't need it. And then I have my libraries here. I don't want my libraries here. So I'm going to click and drag this and I'm going to put it right here. And you see that blue line right there. I'm just going to release the left click of my mouse. And now my libraries are here. So I want that there. And now what I like to do is have my multi mass panel right here. So this is my multi mass panel. So I'm going to click. And I'm going to drag and you'll see the first blue line, the blue line here where I could put it or here, but I want to put it right in here. And, and you'll notice as I pull up here and I'm holding the left click of my mouse down as I'm dragging, as I pull up here, you see that blue line right there. I can release it. And there's my multi mass panel. The next thing I want to do is get my combo panel. That's this one right here, TK8 CO. And if you hover over that, you can see TK8 combo panel. I'm going to click this and drag it. I want to put it right underneath my multi mass panel. Now you'll notice I'm left clicking, I'm dragging, and hey, no blue line, Dave. What the heck is going on here? Well, here's what you need to do keep coming down to the very bottom. And when I do, oh, look, a blue line. So now I can release the left click of my mouse and there's my combo panel. Now, the combo panel's way down here. I have all this space here. That's not good, right? So if I hover right in this area right here, you see that double arrow right there? Left click, as soon as that double arrow pops up, left click and drag up really tight as far as you can go till you can't go anymore and release. And now I have my combo panel here. Pretty cool, right? Now, when we're working with the TKA plugin for Photoshop, we're always working with channels and we save out sky channels and foreground channels. So right here next to my layers, you'll notice I have channels here. And if I click on channels, you can see here's my channels. So look, I'm going to left click and drag and I want to put this right under my combo panel. Now, I'll left click and drag. And again, you don't see a blue bar right there, right? But not a problem. Just keep dragging down to the very bottom. And there's your blue bar. Release it or line. I call it a bar. I call, call it a line. Sorry. But again, I can take this and hover between here. And you see the double arrows? Click and drag up as tight as I can go and release the left click of the mouse. And now here are my channels. And I like to keep my paths, which are vector based line segments. I like to keep those in the same area where my channels are. I don't use paths that often, but from time to time. So I'm going to left click and drag, hold that left click down. And as I hover in this area, you see that blue rectangle. I can release the left click of my mouse and now that's docked. Now, if I left click on channels, I can pull this over and rearrange these. I'll left click on pass and pull this over here. And then I'll click on channels and there are my channels. And if I ever need to access my pass, I can just click on pass and now that's active. But I'm going to go ahead and click on channels again. Now for my workspace, I like to have my combo panel and my CX panel opened up. I have a larger monitor. If you have a smaller monitor, you may only want to either keep the combo or CX panel open. But for larger monitors, I recommend that you open them both. I like to call the combo and CX panel my Swiss Army knife for Photoshop because there's so many things I can do with it. But what I'm going to do is click on the TK8 CX 
panel and I'm going to drag it and I'm going to keep dragging it. Here's my first blue line. I could put it right here. See the little blue line or I can come right here and put it right here. Now you'll notice it's right here and it's very narrow. But you see these uh, double arrows up here? Just click and that opens that up. And here are my actions. Now I'm going to click the X here. So now I have a combo and a CX panel. But what I like to do with this is keep the actions open here at all times. Now there's something that you need to do here to make this happen. Whereas after you've clicked on an action, this will automatically close. So let me X out of here, come up here to where it says TK and click here. And there's options that we could do here. And see right here, close TK. If that's checked on every time you run a TK action, it will close the action panel out. And if you uncheck it and Click on actions and say I add an action like a soft pop action. We'll let this action run here. You notice this did not close. And that's because I clicked on TK and made sure I didn't have close TK checked on. And I really like the fact that I can have all these actions opened up for me and I could use them whenever I need them. So that's really handy. That takes care of three of the TK8 panels. And now I have my My Actions panel and I love this panel. So this has all my actions in it. So I'm gonna click and drag. I wanna put it right under the TK8CX panel. So if I drag down here, no blue line, but keep dragging to the very bottom, and ha, there it is, the blue line. I'll release the left click of my mouse, and there it is. And again, we have the two arrows when I hover over here. And as soon as you see them, left click and drag and just butt that up as far as it'll go and release the left click of your mouse. And now here are my actions readily accessible for me. So I find that very helpful. Next, you see the navigator panel here? I don't use it that often. So I'm gonna left click and drag and put it right here. See the blue rectangle that comes up here or the box? Just release that and now I have my navigator here or I could click on my histogram. And the other thing I like to do, now here's my layers. This is where my layer stack will be. What I like to do is keep my properties panel right above layers. So if I go ahead and let's add a curves adjustment layer right here. You notice my properties is right here. I don't like it here because it goes over my image and that, that just gets in the way for me. So what I'm going to do is grab this properties panel. So I'm gonna left click and drag this and drag it right above layers. Now right there, you can see the entire box, the rectangular box. But if I drag higher, now you see the line right there, okay? So now that I have that line, I can release it. And now I have a properties panel right above the layers, which is really convenient. So now it's not over my image. And this info, I don't use it that often. So I can left click and drag this over and Let's place it right inside of this area right here. So now I have info here and properties here. Okay, we're almost done with my setup here, my customization. All of my tools are located on the left over here. So I'm gonna come here and drag right in this area, these little dash lines, I'm gonna click and drag and see there are all my tools. Holding the left click of the mouse down, dragging over, and I'm gonna hover right in this area till that blue line appears and release, and now my tools are here. So everything I wanna work with is all on the right-hand side of the Photoshop interface. Now this area right here, this is where I have my history and my actions and my libraries and whatever else I feel I wanna put in there. But again, you customize your Photoshop TK8 workspace the way you want it, but this is the way I like to have mine. And then if you come up to the window menu and click here, you have all these other things that you could add to your workspace. For instance, I, whenever I'm making my thumbnails and my intros for my YouTube videos, I like to use like paragraph. So I'm going to click that and you notice I have paragraph here and along with that comes character. So if I click on character, you know, this is where I can change my fonts and so on. So if I don't want to keep these open, I can just click right here and that closes that up. So don't forget about window. There's all kind of stuff here that you can bring out onto your desktop. And the next thing I wanna do is show you how to 
save your customized workspace once you have it all set up. Now, right now, you remember I started with the photography workspace. So basically what I've done was changed up that entire photography workspace. And so I want to save this as its own customized workspace and I have to give it a name. And let me show you how to do it. What you need to do is on the right side at the top here, click here where your workspaces are. And what you want to do is come down here to new workspace, click new workspace. And when you do, it says name untitled. So you want to give it a name. So I'm going to call this, I'll just call this TK8 test. And this is important too. Panel locations will be saved in this workspace. Keyboard shortcuts, menus, and toolbar are optional. I do recommend that you check all these on as well and click save. And now that workspace is saved. So if I come back here and click, you can see there it is, TK8 test. And you can always tell the active workspace when you see a check by the name of a workspace. So that's the workspace that I'm on right now. Now, if I go back and click on photography again, you can see there's that photography workspace. But if I come here and change it to TK8 test, there it is. It's all good. Now, if I come in here and start playing around, say, for instance, I say, you know what? Maybe I don't want this here. So I take this out and I X out of here. I may have accidentally pulled this out and got rid of it by mistake, too. And I say, oh, my gosh, what happened? Well, you can always come back up here and you can click on reset TK8 test and everything will get reset back. So that's really very handy. Now, let's say I don't have a real big monitor. So I'm going to go ahead and take the CX panel, take it out here and click on the X. So I don't want that. I want to move my actions to a different location. So I'm going to click and drag and move this right underneath the combo panel. So there is my actions right there. And now I may say, well, you know what? I want to save this out, but I still want to call it that same name. So here's what I can do. I could come up here, click the drop down, click on new workspace. Okay. But what I'm going to do is type that same name in like TK8 test. And I'm going to click on keyboard shortcuts, menus, and toolbar, and then click on save. And now it says the custom workspace TK8 test already exists. Do you wish to replace it? I'll just click on yes. And now it is saved to the way I have it set up here. So you can alter things and change things around. You just have to resave it using the same name. Now I altered this workspace and I changed it, but this is not the workspace I want. And I have my workspace already saved out for me. So I want to get rid of this workspace. Now pay close attention here so you don't screw up. If I want to delete a workspace, I would come up here and click the drop down for workspaces. And I would choose delete a workspace. And you'll notice it says workspace. There's a drop down here, and this is important. Click this because right now TK8 test is active. I cannot delete it, it's grayed out. So you can never delete a workspace that's active. So I'm going to cancel here. And what I'm going to do is come back up here, click and go to my TK8 workspace, which is this one right here. So I'm gonna click it, and there's my TK8 workspace. Now I wanna get rid of that TK8 test workspace. So I'm gonna come back up to the dropdown, click delete workspace, and now come to the dropdown, click the dropdown, and find TK8 test, which is right here. Click on that, and now I can click delete. And a dialog box comes up. Do you really want to delete the workspace TK8 test? Yes. And now if I come back up again, you'll see TK8 test is no longer here. All right. So that's very, very important. I have a few tips for you that Tony Kuiper wanted me to mention in this video. I'm going to do that now, but stay tuned to the end because I'll show you how to back up your workspace and you don't want to miss that. The first tip is concerning tool tips. Now on any of the TK panels, you'll find this TK button. So you see it here on the combo panel. You'll find it here on the multi mass panel. If I X out of the CX panel, you'll find it right here. If you want to access tool tips, so right now you don't see tool tips. Now, if I hold my option or all key down and hover over buttons, you can see the tool tips. Okay. They'll come up there. 
for you. And that's the way I like to keep it. After you get to know the panel, you don't need the tool tips as much, but occasionally you do. And if you need to find out what a certain button does, just hold your option or alt key down and hover over and you can read about what that button will do. If you want to keep your tool tips on, on any of the TK panels, and you have to do this for each individual panel, click on TK and click on show tool tips. Now you'll notice when I hover you over here, you'll see the tool tips, but you don't see them here. I'd have to come up here and actually turn on the tool tips here, show tool tips, check that on. And now those will be there. And again, if I don't want them, go back to TK and uncheck show tool tips. And now they don't show up as well as the TK combo panel. I'll click here, uncheck show tool tips and now they will not show up. So that's the first tip. Another tip is if you ever have any uh, modification layers opened up from using like luminosity mask or something like that, and they're stuck and you can't get out of it, what you need to do is command or control click on the TK on the multi-mask panel. And when you do that, it resets the panel and removes several layers and channels that the panel has possibly generated, which are no longer needed. Now this condition can occur sometimes if you're working on two separate images in Photoshop. And let's say you were working with a luminosity mask on the first image, and then you switch to the second image. And on the second image, you X'd out of the multi-mask panel, which you weren't even using on that image. And then when you come back to the first image, this issue would occur. And now you know how to take care of this issue. Just command or control click on the TK button on the multi-mask panel and it'll clean up the layers and the channels. Now this next tip concerns if you're having any problems with the TKA plugin for Photoshop, if it doesn't seem to be working properly, and this deals with selections. You'll notice I have a sky selection right here. And you can tell by the selection indicator on the multi-mask panel, and then you have the colored selection indicator on the CX panel, as well as the combo panel. If you're noticing any weird issues, here's what I want you to do. Shut off all the selection indicators and see if that clears up your problem. And to do that, just click on the TK button on each one of the panels and uncheck show selection indicator. So I'm going to check it off here. I'm going to go to the combo panel, click on TK and uncheck selection indicator. And then we'll go to the CX panel and uncheck selection indicator. Okay, now we don't see the selection indicators around the panels. Now, that's not generally a problem, but there's been some cases reported where some people have had problems like that, and shutting off the selection indicators and smart object indicators should take care of it. I've never encountered that issue, but if you have, now you know what to do. I'm gonna go ahead and turn my selection indicators back on. I'll start with my multi-mass panel, click on TK and click on show selection indicator and let's go to my combo do the same thing tk show selection indicator and generally on my cx panel i leave it off because i just leave these two on in reality i probably only should leave this one on because this one to me is the easiest to see i'm going to leave it off on this one here and right now I have a selection, I'm not using it, so I'm just gonna click this button to deselect that selection. The last thing I wanna do is show you how to save out your workspaces as a backup in case something happens to Photoshop and if it ever crashes and you need to reinstall Photoshop, you'll lose your workspaces. So I'll show you how to save those out. First, I'll show you on a Mac and then a PC. On a Mac, go to a window where you don't have anything opened up and Finder should be right here. So click on Go. And look for library. You're probably not going to see it on a Mac. It's hidden. You have to hold the option key down and then library will pop up and then you can click on it. I think I did something to my Mac where it would always be here. I can't remember how I did it, but it shows up here. So just click on library. And then what you want to do is find preferences and preferences is right here. Double click this folder, open it up and then look for Adobe Photoshop 2023 settings. Double click that. And then you'll find a bunch of different preferences files from Photoshop. But you'll notice a folder here called Workspaces and one called Workspaces Modified. Workspaces Modified is what Photoshop uses whenever you do any changes and you don't save it out. When next time you open up Photoshop, whatever you change will be just the way you left it. Now, if I double click on this Workspaces folder, you can see I have two files in here one called tk8 setup video.psw 
Photoshop Workspace, I believe that stands for, and one called TK8 Photoshop Workspace .psw. This folder will house all the workspaces that you can create, and you can create a bunch of different workspaces if you have specialized things that you like to do in Photoshop, and you may like to have different workspaces for different types of edits that you make. Right now I'm in that folder called Workspaces, so I'm gonna click this back arrow, and now what I wanna do is just right click on this workspace and click on Copy, and then I'm just gonna right click on my desktop, because I'll save this on my desktop, but you can save it wherever you want, just so you know where it's at. Right click, and I'll paste the item right here. And now you can see there's the workspaces folder right there. So if something happened to Photoshop and I'd have to do a clean install, well, I could come back to this location, to this folder, and here's the path, library, preferences, Adobe Photoshop 2023 settings, I'm at workspaces, and here's the workspaces folder. So I could delete this folder and then just take the folder that I saved out and drag it into here, and then... When I launch Photoshop, my workspaces would be there. And if you have a PC, it's gonna be different. Now, I do not have a PC, but I have a screenshot here. And here is the path that you would take. On your hard drive, go to Users, go to your username, go to App Data, Roaming, Adobe, Adobe Photoshop 2023, Adobe Photoshop 2023 settings, and inside here, you're gonna find that workspaces folder. Copy that folder, save it somewhere on your hard drive where you know you can get to it, and if something happens to Photoshop and you have to do a clean install, come back to the same area, follow this path, delete this workspaces folder, and then paste in the workspaces folder that you saved, and then when you restart Photoshop, your workspaces should be there for you. Well, there you go, everyone. Now you know how to create a custom TK8 workspace in Photoshop and also how to save that out. Hey, if you enjoyed the tutorial today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to this channel, please subscribe and don't forget to click that bell notification icon. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get a notification. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.